The Hilton Twins dominated the American vaudeville circuit during the 1920s and 30s. Many stories are told of them, some fact, some fiction, others elaborate myths crafted for publicity. In today's episode of Unusual as Usual, we're going to look back at the unfortunate tale of Daisy and Violet Hilton, aka the Hilton Twins. Daisy and Violet Hilton were born on the 5th of February 1908 in Brighton, England. Joined at the hips, they shared a blood circulation and had a fused pelvis bone but shared no major organs between them. Dr James Ruth, writing in the British Medical Journal, said, The case of the Brighton twins has excited a good deal of popular interest and is, I think, extremely rare. As far as I can ascertain, in this country, the case is unique. In spite of their medical miracle, their mother, Katie Skinner, who had given birth to the twins out of wedlock, which was quite a scandal in that day and age, agreed to sell them to her employer, Mary Hilton. Mary immediately saw commercial prospects in them, buying them off her mother and taking them into her care. She then put them on display in the Queen's Arms, a Brighton pub she ran with her husband. The twins proved to be hugely successful and soon embarked on an extensive UK tour, beginning at the age of three. As the girls grew older, in lieu of proper education, they were taught to dance and play musical instruments. Violet played the saxophone and Daisy played the piano. They could also both play the clarinet, ukulele, sing and tap dance. Now, aged eight and billed as the United Twins, the tour took them to Germany and on to Australia, often drawing huge crowds and record numbers of spectators before touring America and eventually settling there. The twins' fame brought an enormous amount of money, which unfortunately, Mary Hilton, her husband and their daughter kept every penny of right up until Mary's death in 1919. History shows it was no secret that Mary saw the twins as commodities rather than as her children, which became even more evident after her passing, when it was revealed that Mary bequeathed all jewellery and possessions, including the twins, to her daughter Edith and her husband Maya Myers. At the funeral, the twins, now aged 11, attempted to run away, but as they recalled in their 1950s memoir, we were told if we were to ever run out on him, or if we ever refused to perform at his command, we would be put into an institution. Over the next decade, Violet and Daisy's careers in the vaudeville scene soared. It was around this time that the escapologist Harry Houdini, one of their close friends, taught them how to mentally separate from each other, saying to them, you must live in your minds, girls. It's your only hope for private lives. These words of wisdom seemed to work as the twins were not getting much free time due to the extensive touring and tight performance schedule. At one point, reportedly earning thousands of dollars a week, but seeing none of it. The Myers had bought themselves a huge estate in San Antonio, Texas, with the money which the girls were being forced to clean. In 1931, the twins became involved in a public scandal over a pitch card they had signed with love to a married man. Myers took them to lawyer Martin Arnold who insisted on speaking to the girls on their own. While Myers was out of the room, they told their story of years of cruelty, confinement and penniless servitude and with Arnold's help, they set about suing the Myers. They successfully sued, settling for $100,000 in damages, although it was just a fraction of the money they had rightfully earned over the years. More importantly though, they gained their freedom and were released from all standing contracts. The newly emancipated sisters ventured into vaudeville on their own, the only thing in life they knew and loved. They formed the Hilton Sisters Review and featured in Todd Browning's 1932 Hollywood film, Freaks, a drama set in an American sideshow. 
Instead of actors in makeup, Browning employed real people with real disabilities, many of which were actually professional sideshow performers in their own right, such as Johnny Eck, the Halfman, Slitzy the Pinhead, and Prince Randian, the Living Torso. Unfortunately, freaks proved too shocking for most audiences, and there was public outcry with cinemas refusing to show the film, leading it to be pulled from British release for over 30 years. The Hiltons sailed back to Britain for a 1933 UK tour. They returned to their hometown of Brighton only once, performing at the Hippodrome for four sellout shows. Daisy began to dye her hair blonde and they started wearing different outfits so they could finally show their individual identities and personalities. Those of you familiar with American Horror Story Freak Show may recognize this storyline as it was played out by the fictional conjoined twins Betty and Doc Tatler. It was at this point that they attempted to reconnect with their birth mother, Kate Skinner, only to discover she had died when they were just four years old, being buried in an unmarked grave in Hartington Road Cemetery. After traveling back to America, the two applied for marriage licenses after being turned down in a total of 21 states on the grounds of gross indecency. They were finally approved. Both had short-lived marriages to homosexual dancers, publicity stunts that didn't win them any favors. They tried Hollywood once again and in 1952 invested all their savings in a film called Chained for Life. The telling of a fictional court case where a jury tries to decide how to punish one half of a pair of conjoined twins for murder. It was supposed to be a surefire hit, but it flopped, ruining them financially. They resorted to making appearances in venues screening their films, signing photographs for money. It was on a trip to Charlotte in North Carolina in 1961 at a drive-in cinema screening of Freaks that they became stranded with no money to move on. The residents of Charlotte took pity on the twins, feeding and housing them. Here, they became part of the small community and decided to stay, eventually finding a job at a local grocery store. Eight years later, on the 4th of January, 1969, after they failed to report to work, their boss called the police. The twins were found dead in their home, aged 60, victims of the Hong Kong flu. According to forensic investigation, Daisy died first, followed by Violet anywhere between two and four days later. They were buried in Forest Lawn West Cemetery in Charlotte. And there we have it, the unfortunate tale of the Hilton twins, Daisy and Violet Hilton. How about you? How well do you think you've caught with a twin? Maybe you already have one. Let me know in the comment section below. And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe. That's all we've got time for today, but I'll see you all next week. And as always, stay unusual as usual. If you've enjoyed this video, you might like this one too. If you want to see more anatomical oddities, you can check out the full playlist by clicking here. Don't forget to ring that bell to make sure you don't miss out on next week's video. And if you have any ideas on what the next episode should be about, make sure you add it to the comment section below.